One of the things that can be challenging on the fretless is landing big jumps, meaning we're gonna have to jump up and nail a note that's either way up or way down. It's one of those things that just gets easier with practice. So there's no shortcuts around that. And so I came up with this little piece, this fun piece of music, kind of very Jimmy Page inspired, honestly. Um, a little riff. And look at this, folks. Yes, it's a plectrum. It's a pick. Now, I, I know there's, there's humor and some strong emotions connected with the use of a pick, especially on the fretless bass, it seems. I, I put some posts up on my media and I, you're using your plectrum? And I put this, this meme of, uh, of whatever murderer is sitting in the cell and uh, one is uh, talking to another. I said, what did you do? Oh, I killed somebody. And then the other one said, oh, what did you do? I said, I used the pick on the bass. And he moves across the other side of the room because he's uh, so disgusted with it. But uh, I have no reservations about that because what it does is, to me, adds different colors to the palette. And so the more we have access to, the better as far as I'm concerned. And I developed this little trick, which I'll, I'll demonstrate before we do this exercise, where I can tuck the pick into my hand and still have access to the fingers. So it's, it's a useful tool because it gives a lot of versatility. And I'll just demonstrate that before we do the exercise. Good old fingers. And here we go. I love the pick, and in general, there's two different kinds that, uh, that I use because they respond differently, they sound different, and so there's the, the nylon, it's a heavy one millimeter, I think, maybe it's 75, I'm not sure, but, uh, and then like the Delrin, Dunlop, uh, the heavy one millimeter one. And for this, I'm gonna use the, uh, the nylon one, and uh, we'll play along with this track, and gonna be some big jumps and digging in. It's a rocking track. All right, let's go, let's do this. Rock and roll, baby. Okay, so um, when I was doing the slide ups, the little things that you can do, and this goes back to the uh, sliding exercises where I was sliding on the string below it. 
Those positions get tricky, and my part wasn't perfectly clean, but that's rock and roll, okay? I'm primarily a rock player, and so I'm more interested in the emotion than the 100% accuracy. Beethoven always said he'd rather have somebody if they are technically perfect, but don't have the emotion and the conviction, he's not interested because it doesn't move people. People get so hung up on being technically perfect, which, you know, you got to have that. you got to play the right notes at the right time, most of the time anyway, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you got to have the emotion and the intent and the drive. So, yeah, this was a little sloppy, I have to admit, but was it rock and roll? Yes, it was. So, anyway, um, did that on the, uh, on the high string uh, for the last part of the exercise, and I slid up on the string below. Kind of gives you a little bit more room to aim for when you're going for that top string from the string below. You can do it on the same string. I think it's meteor when you do it on the string below. And then um, I did change the position of it to make this for a different tone so you can hear that and a different kind of stretcher and a uh, big jump as well. So there's a lot of thought and, and things that go into a simple little exercise like that, but uh, you practice that and you can do it finger style as well. I was doing it uh, pick just to demonstrate uh, the pick as well, but you can absolutely do it finger style as well and it has a different vibe. In fact, I encourage you to do it both ways with the fingers as well. So go at it and master that.